What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create a book mock-up in Adobe Photoshop. Now as you can see I have a PNG image of a book that's nothing but solid white and what we're going to do is apply a book cover design to this blank book here. Now for this to work we have to have our design on a separate Photoshop document which I have right up here. We're going to use the cover of my already published book, The Ultimate Guide to Cadillac Cartooning. We're going to apply this design to this book cover here. So the first thing that I got to do is select the target area. Where do I want to apply this design? So I'm going to click on the book layer because that's obviously where I want to apply it. And then I'm going to go to one of my selection tools here. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Okay, and then I'm going to select the target area, which would obviously be the front cover here and this spine. So I'm going to just uh, select that and then I'm going to zoom in to see if the selection tool picked up everything. Okay, so I want this part of the book cover to be selected too. So what we can do is add to that selection. So instead, I'm going to go to my lasso tool here. And I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool and then I'm going to hold the shift key and just select that portion right there and then go all the way to the top and if you're still holding the shift key then your lasso tool will make a straight line like this so you can let go of the shift key for now because Photoshop knows already that you want to add to that selection so I'm going to make a straight line that stops right about here and then just continue to add to that selection. All right, and now we're gonna go back to the bottom where we started and kind of connect the polygonal lasso tool to our first point that we made, which in this case is right here. So I'm gonna click on that. And now Photoshop selected that one region that the quick selection tool did not pick up. So I'm just gonna check one more time to make sure it got everything. And yeah, that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is use the keyboard shortcut Command J to make a separate layer out of just this selection. So Command J. And there we go. So now we have a layer with just the book cover. But now we can get to applying the design to this book cover. So before we get to doing that, I'm going to make a clipping mask layer. Because after I proceed with the next step, then the design will kind of merge with this layer and become one. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to go to the bottom right here where this plus sign is to create a new layer. And we're going to turn that into a clipping mask layer. So a quick way to do that is to click on that layer and hold the option key. And then wait for your cursor to have this icon that pops up like so with a square and an arrow pointing down. So I'm going to click there. And then that layer becomes indented, thus creating a clipping mask layer. So if I were to grab my paintbrush tool right here and just color anywhere on that layer, it stays within the boundaries of this layer. But in this case, we're not going to use the paintbrush tool in this video. So I'm going to use Command Z to undo that. And now we can get to applying our design. So I'm going to go to my design workspace, which is this book cover here. And what we're going to do here is select and copy it. So we're going to use the keyboard shortcut Command A to select it like so and then command C to copy it all right and now let's go back to our mock-up workspace and we're not going to paste our design into our workspace right away because you can see that our design it's a straight rectangle like so and if I go back to the book we can see that it has some sort of a tilted edge right here it's still straight which is an advantage to us but we don't want to paste it right then and now and then have to warp it later on. We're not going to do that. So a better way to do this would be to go up here to filter, then go down here to vanishing point. And now we're in a separate window. So now from here, we can select each and every corner of the book cover that we want to apply this design to. In this case, it would be these four corners right here. So what I'm going to do is use this tool, my cursor, and select each corner like so. And then that last corner right here, bam. And then after we select the final corner, we have what looks to be a grid here. Now, the next step would be to paste our design in here. 
So that's when we can hit Command V to paste. So Command V. And I'm gonna use my transform tool, which should be this arrow with like a little grid here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut letter T and just drag this design onto the warped space like so. And then you can see that this design now has anchor points. So in my case, I'm gonna resize it so that way it fits the dimensions of the book cover like so. And that looks perfect. So after you're satisfied with all your changes, I'm gonna hit okay. And now we can see that our design is now on the book cover and it's already warped so we don't have to do anything like that and risk pixelating our design. But real quick, I'm gonna toggle visibility on this layer. You don't have to do this, but I just wanna show you something. So if I zoom in right here, you can see that this is obviously a spine to the book and we want our design to kinda of show that, you know, because right now it doesn't. So on this layer where our design is, I'm going to go to my blending options right here. It should be this drop box that says normal, which would usually be in the layers window, which is right there. So I'm going to hit that. And then if you want, you can play around with all these different blending options and see which one works best for you. But for me, I'm going to set it to multiply. And then hopefully you guys can see this, but we can see that part of the spine or at least the shading on the spine is at least a little visible like so, because it probably isn't visible on this dark blue color here, but you can see that it is visible down here. But if that shading there seems too light or seems too dark, we can click on that layer right here and then go up here to layer, layer style and go to blending options. And then from here, you can just play around with these uh, blending options right here or at least anywhere in this window and make sure preview is on so that way you can see what you're doing. And just play around with these little sliders here to see if you get a result that you're satisfied with. But in my case, I'm satisfied with all this so I can hit OK on this window. And then if I zoom back out, we can see that it really looks like a book. but. With every hardcover book, there's also a back cover. And obviously, I don't want this back cover to be completely white because you can see in my book cover that we applied, it has some sort of a blue background to it. So I wanna apply that same blue to the back cover as well. So we can quickly do that by going to our original book layer. And then with my polygonal lasso tool selected, let me zoom in real quick. I'm just gonna use this tool to select the back cover. Like so. And now we have that selected. And since we're on the book layer, we can use the keyboard shortcut like we did before, Command J, to make a duplicate layer with just this selection. So Command J. And now the portion of the back cover that we can see, it's now on its own layer. So now what I'm gonna do is make a whole nother layer and we're gonna turn that into a clipping mask layer. So let's do what we did before and hold the option key and wait for this icon to pop up or at least move your cursor until that icon does pop up and then click and now that layer is indented thus making it a clipping mask layer. So now what I'm gonna do is fill that layer with that dark blue color. So now I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool that's over here. I'm gonna zoom in to select that blue color. There we go. So on that clipping mask layer that we just created, I'm gonna go and grab my paint bucket tool. Right now I have the gradient tool selected, but I don't really need that. So I'm gonna click and hold on that and then click on the paint bucket tool. And then in my colors window, that blue that I have is selected. So now I can just click anywhere in my document and make that into a blue color. And now after dropping in that blue color, I'm now gonna go to my blending options again and select multiply. And now that blue becomes darker, but that's okay because that blue that we have selected, it's now blending in with any shades that are within this book. So if I zoom in here, we can see that there's some sort of a, a dark gradient right there. Um, there's a dark cast shadow right here and then a cast shadow down here as well. So that's what the multiply option does. It kind of blends in with any gradients within your mock-up or within your whatever it is you're creating in Photoshop. 
So now I'm gonna hit Command Zero to zoom to fit. And there we go. So we are pretty much done with creating our book mockup. So in my case, this is a PNG image. So if you wanna save it as a PNG and use it for whatever, then by all means. But with me, I'm gonna add like a little background to this Photoshop document, which I already have prior to making this video. So it was invisible the entire time. So I'm gonna make that visible now by clicking this eye icon here, or at least this little checkbox right here. And now we have a background for our book mockup. But let's say I also wanna add a drop shadow to it, like just underneath the book here. So what I'm gonna do is make a whole new layer that's in between the background and our original book layer. So I'm gonna click this plus button down here to make a new layer. And then I'm gonna go and grab my shape tool right here. It should be underneath this little arrow tool right here. So it should be right here. So I'm gonna click and hold on that and grab the ellipse tool. Or if you wanna use a regular Photoshop brush, then you can do that as well. But for me, I'm gonna use just this basic circle here. I'm gonna click and drag to make a circle. And then up here, we can adjust the fill and stroke options. In my case, I don't really need a stroke for this circle. And there's a little option here that says no color. It should be a white square with a red line through it. That means no color or no fill. So what I'm gonna do is click on that. And now that stroke is gone because I don't need it. But the important thing is we need to add a fill. So what I'm gonna do is fill that circle with a black color. So I'm gonna go to the color option by fill and I'm gonna change that to a black, okay? And that's all we need. So now real quick, I'm gonna go to that circle layer. I'm gonna right click and scroll down until I see rasterize layer. And now that shape turned into a regular image which I can then manipulate or do whatever I wanna do with it. So what I'm gonna do is click on that layer one more time, go up here to filter, go to blur, and hit Gaussian blur. And then with the preview checkbox on, I can now blur that circle so that way it looks like a drop shadow. And with that, I can still manipulate it resize it and do whatever else I want to do with that and then after adding the shadow that is our book mock-up so yeah that looks like a really good and convincing book mock-up and speaking of book this is my very first published book published back in 2020 and it is available for purchase on Amazon link in the description to get there but yeah that's gonna do it for the video if you liked it or if you found it useful give it a like and a comment subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I'll see you in my next video I can't let a nigga like